Let's do this. Grab your colour wheels and welcome to uh, rock painting workshops today. We're going to be using the Creative Colour Wheel and it's by the Colour Wheel Company. It's an American item and I'm going to show you how I'm going to choose the colours for this bunny. So I'm going to do the bunny in one colour and then what uh, out, outside colour I'm going to put with him. So I've decided the bunny today is going to be yellow. So I'm going down all the different tints of yellow and on my color wheel I'm looking at the complementary which is the opposite color on the color wheel and this brings me to violet. So I'm going to go look at my paint pens and I'm looking at all the yellow pens I have and all the purple pens I have knowing that one of them is a little bit warm but that's okay. Remember so just the opposites we've got the yellow and the violet. Now there's a few different ways you can choose the colours. If you look down, I chose the complementary. You might choose the triad, which goes down into the pink and the blue. So yellow is my main colour. Split complementary is the violet and blue. So these little arrows give you all sorts of little hints. You just set up the main colour you're going to start with. Let's try and show you the whole thing and it gives you different color schemes to work with. So we've got our bunny rock, yellow and purple pens that we just chose from the color wheel and microfiber cloth, my water, paintbrush, all ready to do some smooshing later. And I will start and do my bunny with the yellow uh, that I chose as my main color. I've got Bert, so just give my rock, a, uh, my rock, give my pen a little bit of a test on Bert to make sure it's working. I've given them a huge shake before I started as well, and I only start them. Um, I shake all my pens at the beginning of every day, not every session. So I've already used these yellow ones today, so they didn't need too much shaking for this particular rock. But if I was starting out and it's the first rock of the day, I just give all the pens a quick shake and make sure the pigment and binder is all mixed up together perfectly. Test it on Bert like I did before and you know that uh, everything's great and you can start painting on your rock. If anything's gonna go wrong, it's gonna happen on Bert when you test the rock and he's pretty strong and he can handle it. Okay, just quickly color all this around. So I'm just putting a nice thin layer of colour over my bunny. I'm just going to work out what colour I want the yellow. Yeah, I've got that one. Okay, so then the new yellow, the first one I tried, it was just a little bit too warm. So it's going towards a sort of orangey, reddy colour. And that's not quite what I wanted. But if you look closely, you'll see that the coverage so far is not... 100% perfect because it's the first layer so that sort of plays all around the rock with how it's going to uh, soak in sometimes your rocks a little bit porous it might soak in a little bit and that's fine on the first layer the second layer you want it to come up looking really great so I'll just pop some green leaves in there All right, I'm going to do the inner ears yellow. See, normally I just go pink, so I've just got to think, think this out. But if I add the shadowing and everything in, that will work out really good. Okay. See, it's really important to test it because this pen is either dried up or out of paint. So I'll just put that one aside. I've got another one on the go. So that's it's really important to just test your colors out. This one's more of a new version of purple. So on the color wheel that we did before, this was the complementary color, remember? I chose yellow as my main color. Directly opposite on the color wheel is purple. And I've chosen that to be my secondary color on the rock. Yeah, so have a look at the brand again that I showed you at the beginning, because some color wheels aren't as well set out as this one. Okay. Now we've got 
two coats on. So we let that first coat dry and we just repeated the process. I've got my water, my paintbrush, microfiber cloth uh, at the top of my mat. And I'm just dipping the paintbrush in the water. And this is all the water I take off. What I showed you on my hand is all the excess that I normally wipe off on the microfiber. And then I just tap it on top of the nib or you can go right inside the well there. Sometimes there's some extra paint that's been caught up there. And you can just start using that as your shading color. So you don't want the paintbrush too, too wet. And you can see here I'm going in underneath her eyes and I'm going underneath her flower headdress because that's where shadows would throw. And there it's just it's just as easy to scribble on your rock and use your damp brush to sort of smush it around. Whatever you like your method to be, just go for it. But yeah, in, in that eye socket area and everything, that's it is darker. It does recede back into your head if you know what I mean. So that's where I'm throwing the shadows on the bunny today. His neckline as well because the head casts shadow onto the body and the neck area. And these are the darker areas that naturally would show on your image. Just going to smush some darker purple shading in on the flower. And let's go a little bit darker in green and just get some shading up on the leaves there. You can see it's just just smushing. I'm not trying to be so neat and precise and have an even line. I'm just getting that all smushed around. Okay, so here the lilac colour, what I'm showing you the areas here is it's lighter, it's not darker. So they're in the, the raised section where the light can get to. Okay, so I'm doing an opposite on this one and anywhere the sun would shine, like tips of the nose, right out in the open where nothing's throwing a shadow that's where you would see the lighter colors i just want to take that flower a little bit deeper because right in the middle of the flower it would be darker because less light gets into the middle and we'll just take this yellow a little bit darker as well so we're just emphasizing the shadow areas just a little bit of a smushy blend just so it doesn't become a solid line okay black and white poskas so once you're you know your colors dry always test my black and white out on Bert just to make sure I don't get any surprises like big black blobs or anything on my rock and then you can just start outlining your images just defining the outlines color in her eyes nice black there see how I turn the rock upside down to do the other side you don't need to have the rock facing up to do the eyes turn it upside down and you'll have a better chance of getting the eyes a bit more even than if you tried to go left to right doesn't want to cooperate. It's all right. Don't forget when you're outlining too, you've got all the bumps of the rock and everything, so don't try and do the impossible. You don't have a perfectly smooth canvas, so you just have to work in with divots and work in with what nature's given you to naturally create on. Like there's nothing everyone's trying to get this perfect smooth absolute I don't know surface that's so crystal clear and smooth and it's not going to happen it's a rock like we've chosen this for a reason so don't be worried about all the little divots on the rock they just naturally come with it and I'm going to in darker adding bits more shading because this is really where the light wouldn't shine so this really goes into the darker areas and just gives it just defines it that little bit more with the shadows and she's a wee bit cute, isn't she? Okay. Right. 
Now I'm just darkening up where the lines go. Because you can see the top of my rock, I've broken some of it off. There's a divot on a cheek there. Don't worry, just keep going. Okay, I'll draw those whiskers out. Whiskers are the last thing you want to put on, by the way. Just that last... Give it a nice, see I'm just going back and forth to get that real scribbly outline like we did on our Easter, Happy Easter rock the other day. So it's just back and forth and give it a real good scribble. But yeah, never worry about the whiskers until absolutely last. Because they'll go up over the edge. Just want to deepen in there. You'll find a bit more shadow. You just I always just put the rock have a look at it and go, oh, you know what, I need to add a little bit more. And then now I'm thinking, hmm, probably shouldn't have added that bit. <laughs> Never mind. It's what it is, right? And last, I grab my white Posca, going to throw in the highlights. This is everywhere where the sun is going to shine and highlight onto your items. Into the eyes, the tip of the nose, like I was saying before. And there she is. Some little hearts because I really like her. She's really sweet. Just add in a little bit of love. Why not? Come and show us your colour schemes. Pop on over to the Facebook group. 